panelists. This is a portrait wedding emphasis portfolio. It contains portrait wedding electives 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Emily Grangrave. <laughs> Emily. Portfolio accepted. It's soft, but it just goes flat. 
and it doesn't help or any. And I think in some cases, actually having a little more modeling and having a little more shadow, even though it's a high-key picture, I understand, would just maybe would help, would help give more shape to her face and narrow it a little bit. Similarly, it's hard to say, I didn't meet her, but there's a lot of pictures that you have people with their heads turned, and maybe that would have been good for her. Tough to know. Also, maybe if her body's not square on, like this kind of thing, maybe that would be okay. It's hard to say. But um, I, think it, I think it works well. There's a thing just to be careful of, which is in, the, in a bunch of these, the far eyes in focus, but the near one's not, which is fine, but it's just like, it's a tough call. You just have to be real careful. It, because in a picture, this eye is almost as important as that one, so you just want to make sure they're all, you know, it's just something to look at more than anything else, I think. Um, I think in some of the stuff, the skin is printed kind of hot, so you want to keep it, you know, good. I think in this kind of thing, <clears throat> it's a matter of maybe, just in, in the printing of it even, um, just maybe just darkening this down a tiny bit so your emphasis goes there. Because right now this is the brightest part of the picture, you know. And I, I just don't know. Like, I don't know if I love him. I don't know if I love him bare shoulder given that he's wearing the cap. You know, would he be better if he were in, like, in a black t-shirt in the same picture? Hard to say. You know, it's just one of those things. Um, now, if this guy were very chested, now you'd be talking. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to, like, given that this thing's at night and it's dramatically lit, um, is this his cruiser? Is that his police car? Like, would it be cool to see that light on? Oh, the blue is it. Tell me it's a better light. But, uh, you know what I mean? I just feel like, because it doesn't, the light, the picture's dramatic, but the, the, I just feel like, the, you know, the car would be, be neat if he had that. Um, sometimes also, don't have to do it, but in a situation like this, where you have a funny color that's justified because it exists in the picture, you could actually not have the guy completely lit by it, but you can actually have like a kick light or something on the side that looks like it's the red light coming from the thing or the blue. It's just a thought. All these things are just like, you know, 20 20 hindsight things, but I'm just throwing them out there. Um, I think she's really, really nice. She's really punchy. She's with you. It's not overfilled. It looks really nice. It looks bright and sunny. The only thing I have with this is just that she coming right out of her shoulder just feels, these feel a little distracting, like you either want to, you know, it's funny that she's cut, so just, I'd either tell me to take the picture when it's their turn, <laughs> tell them to leave or something. But you know, I mean, that's a tricky thing, I think. I think this is really nice of her with a dog. I think that's a super nice picture. It works out really well. I think this is really nice. I think kissing pictures are tough because on the one hand, it wants to be tasteful. On the other hand, it needs to look like they're kissing. On the other hand, you don't want it to be gross. So it's, you know what I mean? It's kind of a tough call. I think that it looks tender and it looks really nice. It feels a little overfilled to me. But the lights, it's a real good call in terms of where the light is. To have them rimlet like that's really nice. I just think maybe, again, because they have white shirts on, maybe less is more a little bit. Like if you had a reflector, I'd kind of hit their faces and not so much there. or cheat the flash up a little, however you want to do it, but I keep the emphasis there, but just quieter. But I think it looks really nice. Um, this one, the objects just seem too unrelated. That's, that's the only thing I thought about that. This feels cozy. I think that's got a nice look for sure. This one just felt too pasty to me. He, he, this is like the baby equivalent of her. Do you know what I mean? This is like a picture of her much earlier in life. <laughs> she, oh, is that really? Is that, that, oh, is that true? That's so funny. So, see, they, they share the same lighting. It's incredible. <laughs> but then, you know, to me, it's a little bit same. This one, I think it's just not, it's just not cute enough. And I, I think you just need to up the cuteness factor. I'm not sure exactly how or what or why or if they're both sleeping, if you're shooting straight. That's hard to know. Do you know what I mean? That's a tricky call. I think this is a tough pose for her because of the fact that she's heavier. I feel like, and her show, like it all just causes everything to mush together and become very, a very fleshy situation. So I think that, that that might be better. I think the light on her is actually really good. I think that's a really good call. I just think if she was not all pulled up, that might be a good thing. That's about it, though. And I think maybe, usually I think a long lens is nice for portraits. In her case, a shorter lens could be good and could be a nice thing. I think these two work well. They're just a little hot for me. And again, I wonder if, if this shirt's the best call. Like, you know, because again, it's, it's sort of like in the picture, you're telling people where they should look. Do you know what I mean? So in this case, 
I want to be looking at him in the sacks and I don't want to be looking at his shirt. So I just have him wear a darker shirt or buy him one or send him home or something. You know what I mean? No, seriously, I think it would be better. You know, um, I think that this is, works fine. I think it's good. The group, of pictures, the group of guys is good. I think the fact that they're perched up there is really unusual, and that's a good call. I think it's neat. You could even up it further and have some guy hanging out of the window. You know, I mean, you could really keep it going, but I think it looks good. This guy's just overfilled for me, I think. And uh, the only problem I have with this is that it looks, it looks Titanic-ish. It looks, you know, it's looked like this is, the church is in heavy seas. And I think that before you show it to anybody, you got to just either crop it and straighten it up or whatever, but it definitely looks like it's going that way. But again, I'm, I'm just being picky because this is our chance to actually really, you know, nitpick through stuff. But I think overall it's solid, and I think it'll do well. It's great. Yeah, yeah I mean, I agree with all the previous comments. Um, really um, solid. I think um, just, you know, the future and some things you can do also without um, reshooting any of these pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, most photographers that I work with have a really strong understanding of retouching. So, you know, like when I look at a picture like this, you know, there's definitely things that you could do retouching wise without having to reshoot that could just make her look more attractive. Um, same thing, like even when I look here, I see a really big red blotch on her forehead and that's so easy to get rid of. So, you know, paying attention to those little details I think can, um, really make a difference. Um, you know, even when I look at the baby, you know, there's, I'm just looking at blotchy red, you know, you can clean those things up e easily. I mean, this is, you know, a situation where, you know, it's beautiful. I mean, it's, you know, she's got these rosy cheeks. It's, you know, interesting to look at, you know, and there's not, and I'm not saying like anything heavy. There's, you know, as you grow and, and learn and experience, you know, you'll start to pay attention to all those little details and it's not about making somebody look different, it's just about making them look the best that they can be in a real way. Um, and, uh, what else was I gonna say? Um, you know, it, it's interesting when I look at this picture, um, you know, when I found out that the book was Twilight, it would have been so cool to see you prop it in a way that sort of was more telling to what's going on. You know, it's, I think, you know, you're telling a story. I mean, this is something where, uh, you know, I'm I'm being tuned into what's going on by the propping and the lighting. And you know, when I saw that the book was Twilight, I thought, oh, that's so interesting. But what else in there can cue me, or what kind of story do you want to tell me about this person that lives in this room? You know what I mean? So it's those kind of things that I think can, you know, in a still life situation like that, can really um, make people really curious as to what's going on. Um, the only thing I would say is I think this could be a little bit like the color. It doesn't look like a color I'd want to wear. Like, a, you know, like I get it, it's like a movie color, but I would somehow bring it out because like when you're selling a product, you want to bring their attention to it and it just sort of looks a little flat, a little dull. Um, and is this, was this put in or was that shot? Oh, okay, cool. All right. Yeah, congratulations. Same old question, now, did you sleep last night? Okay, because you should have. It's a really nice body of work. In fact, it's really funny, when I looked at this, I didn't even pick up on Batman at first. I thought it was a kid from one of those snobby little military schools, and then I started thinking, <laughs> wow, they really dress up for a great day. No, you've got a really nice look. This is one of the sweetest and best window shots that we've seen yet. I think it's just, it's got a really nice feel to it. You've obviously got all the skills here to nitpick, just in terms of what you would show if you were going in and either setting up your own portrait studio or you wanted to go work for a portrait photographer. Um, definitely, I mean, I would, I would leave out some of these, although as a product shot and showing that you can shoot a piece of glass, you got it. Um, on the dog, and this, remember guys, these are all sort of our pet peeves. I have an issue with dogs and people and everybody else that get, get cut. And he's got such a great face. I would just bring it up a little bit more and just make the portrait stronger. So in terms of a piece in your portfolio, 
just get rid of cutting off the rest of his legs and just go for the headshot because it's it's such a strong shot and it looks so good. You might as well make it look better so that when you show your portfolio, the whole idea is to have a bunch of wild prints. And your wild prints are here and here. I agree with Greg, but I think you might be able to fix this up just by reprinting it and just, just, just bring it down a little bit. Um, just to give a little more drama in his face and the sacks. Great headshot. Love this one together. Um, all of these being pieces that, that, that one, that one, those three in your portfolio right there if you were showing them to a portrait photographer. Definitely here, definitely him. I think it could, you could probably just fix some of the things Greg was talking about. Maybe just by reprinting it a little bit and just toning it down. Um, this one I this one I love, but I don't know. I might even I might even crop it tighter to show it as a portrait of, of friend and dog. Um, the cop is a great shot. It's a really good solid body of work. And and to Greg's point, um, you might be able to just just reprinting this might help it. Or if you have some other shots that you took in the series, look for some that maybe don't have a flush straight on looking down the lens bit. But it's a really nice body of work. panelist being Skip, and the low panelist being tomorrow. Skip, if you'd like to start the debate as to why tomorrow and possibly Greg should raise their score. It's just a good, solid portfolio. In fact, there are only, um, I think there are only two images that I would change if I were going to actually show it. I would keep absolutely everything that's there in just as it is. I just thought it was good, solid, it's consistent. Um, the lighting looks good. As Greg has said before, you can tell that every image was taken um, with the same precision and attention to detail. Thanks, Kip. Tomorrow? Um, I just think there's some, I mean, it's a solid portfolio. I just think there's some lighting, retouching, composition things that um, are not as strong. Thanks, Mom. Skip, do you have a vote? No. Thank you. Panels, please, your score. Jan Baumgartner. is a comprehensive emphasis portfolio. It contains portrait wedding electives 2, 5, 6, 8, and 12, and imaging arts elective 6.
portfolio contains a discrepancy with the DVD submission of your website. Whether your portfolio is accepted or not, you must rectify this discrepancy during the re-review process. Megan, your portfolio is accepted. <laughs> Panelists, this is a comprehensive emphasis portfolio. It contains portrait wedding electives 1, 10, and 11, commercial tabletop electives 2, 5, and 6. Jason, portfolio accepted. Expensive <laughs> emphasis portfolio. It contains portrait wedding electives six and seven, commercial tabletop electives two and five, and imaging arts electives six and seven. Miranda Lee Perro. <laughs> Miranda, your portfolio contains the following discrepancy with the stated criteria. One of your additional personal submissions does not meet the minimum image area requirements. Whether your portfolio is accepted or not, you must rectify this discrepancy during the re-review process. Miranda, your portfolio is accepted. <laughs> this is portfolio. It contains portrait wedding electives 6 and 7, commercial tabletop electives 3 and 6, and imaging arts electives 3 and 12.
high panelists being a skip and the low panelists being tomorrow. Skip, if you'd like to start the debate as to why tomorrow and possibly Greg should raise their scores. Oh, I just, I, I love this portfolio. It's consistent um, across the board. I, the fact that there's a single image that I would that I would pull out of here. I would change things around depending on who I was showing the portfolio to. Um, but there's very little tweaking that I would do in any of the images. I just thought it was a spectacular body of work. Thanks, Kim. Tomorrow? Um, I think it's a really beautiful portfolio, but I would disagree and say it's not um, completely consistent. Um, uh, there are a few images that um, I feel don't fit in, um, but uh, I think it's you know really beautiful portfolio. Thank you. Skip, do you have a rebuttal? No, I, we all probably want it. Thank you. Alice, please restore. Yari Gonzalez. David, portfolio accepted. Yes. This is a comprehensive emphasis portfolio. It contains portrait wedding electives 1, 8, and 12. Commercial tabletop electives 2 and 8, and imaging arts elective 11.
Tyler. Portfolio accepted. This is a comprehensive emphasis portfolio. No. It contains portrait wedding electives 8 and 12, commercial tabletop electives 3, 4, and 7, and imaging arts elective 12. Portfolio accepted. This is a comprehensive emphasis portfolio. It contains portrait wedding electives 8 and 10, commercial tabletop elective 3, and imaging arts electives 2, 4, and 6. Ashley, your portfolio contains the following discrepancy with the stated criteria. Your name appears on one of your required submissions and it should not. Whether your portfolio is accepted or not, you must rectify this discrepancy during the re-review process. Ashley, your portfolio is accepted. <laughs> Panelists, this is a comprehensive emphasis portfolio. It contains oh portrait God, wedding electives 7 and 9, commercial tabletop electives 2 and 10, and imaging arts electives 6 and 10.
Jennifer. Portfolio accepted. to it, the green and the blue, like these light pastel colors um, with his, against his dark skin and this beautiful natural light coming in. There's just um, a real sophistication to that image. It's just, it's really, really beautiful. Um, you know, I also like this one. It's sort of poppy, um, but very cool. The textures and I can see everything. It just feels like it's nicely cropped. Um, I don't know if I'm standing away from or standing in front of the picture. Um, and that's really nice. You know, I, I like this one too. For some reason, um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I didn't get that he was a tattoo artist for, for a bit. You know, it's like, um, I'm not sure. I mean, I like it, but I just, there's something about me seeing this later. It just, I feel like I'm not sure where to look, and you know, it's, um, I mean, it's a really beautiful picture, but I feel like, again, everything's so intentional. I think, I don't know, the fact that she's holding Cosmo, like, I don't know if you make more of that, or, you know, it, it's something about the fact, I guess because he's actually giving her a tattoo, it seems like, why is he looking at, at the camera? He should be focusing on her arm. It, I don't know, it feels like it should be more of a caught moment. Maybe I'm having trouble expressing myself, but, and, you know, um, so I lose the focus over here because he's looking at camera somehow. Um, I think this is really, really nice. Um, and I also like the bunny. Um, I like, again, that I'm not, you know, I'm just seeing her legs. Um, <clears throat> I think it's nice the way you shot the kids, this one. And I think this is the, really sweet. The coloration is beautiful. Um, I mean, she's looking at camera, but she feels really relaxed. And um, this is a nice, like, simplicity to it. Um, you know, again, her costume and everything, like all those, um, all those little bits. You know, it just all seems to work together. Here, like, these are wings too, right? Okay, it's funny, this, you know, I feel like it doesn't work as well because this could be almost like a shrug, you know, it, I don't, to I mean, I know that they're wings, but it took me a while to get there, I wish I just got a little bit more of a sense of them because it could be, I don't know, I just feel like that's so much part of the picture that I wish I saw more of it. I mean, I think the, the way he styled her, um, all of it is really, really nice. It's just, I wanted to see just a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> um, even this one I think is really, really beautiful. Um, the lighting is gorgeous. It looks really, really nice um, with the bag and everything. You know, it's just kind of like, this sort of bothers me just seeing this little white, like, it's kind of like, it's not connected to the legs. So I almost feel like it just should go away or see more of it somehow because I just, it looks like an odd shape. It's just little details. I mean, it's beautiful. It's just about like making things just a little bit better. Um, on this one, I don't feel like I feel like I want to see this picture, and I don't want to see this big. Um, for some reason, I, you, you know, you'll learn this as you get into the field. There's certain there's certain um, uh, products that it's really important to not only show them in a picture, but also show them smaller on the side. 
With guitars, it's like more about the experience. I mean, a lot of products, it's about the experience. But in this case, because you have the logo up here, and this, I think, looks like a really cool picture. I just want to see more of this. That you don't necessarily need this. I think, you know, as a photographer, I don't know. I just want to see more of this picture, and this isn't as necessary. It's not that it's it's okay that it's being there. I'm just saying it, you know, as a photographer and with this kind of a product, you don't really necessarily need to show it twice, especially since you have the logo. I mean, you could, you know, what, what some people do is you could take this, and as opposed to having this, you could, you know, turn this on its side and bring it, make it small, have it pop out the side here on the top. You know what I mean? So. You just don't need to show that kind of logo so many times, but um, you know, it just makes it simpler. And again, I'm really focusing on the photograph behind it. Um, so I mean, I think this is really nice as well. Really, really beautiful. Um, you know, so overall, really, really good work. It's, um, I mean, congratulations and good job. Feel better now. Okay. Uh, I think you have two or three different themes here that maybe you need to build on more. If if your goal is to photograph for magazines, in other words, to tell a story, then I would take this image and I would expand on it and do. Um, it might be a macro shot. I would do more detail. That told the story. So this is, we're only looking at one image, and I know you can't put up a whole theme in one portfolio here for this kind of a, an exercise, but I would look for three or four more images that you might want to have in your portfolio that expanded on that theme. Your black and white portraiture is very strong. That is just, this one, the, the two of them are just outstanding. They've got, they've got power, they've got attitude. Um, and then I love the fact that this feel is so illustrative, and I would almost go after, um, I would expand on the series here, even though they're different. Um, they've got this feel to them. Um, and I would expand on just the technique to have one or two more. Some things that, that I might, might change, maybe even pull out of the portfolio. There was a, a great photographer by the name of Tibor Horvath that used to do print critique. Um, at WPPI conventions. This one, quality-wise, it's an outstanding exposure, it's beautiful, but it doesn't work for me because I don't get it. I don't know if she's on the tracks because he's about to tie her up and leave her there. Um, and Tibor used to talk about natural environments, like when he saw a bride you know, flying through the air in the woods, would the groom and the bride be in the woods in the first place um, in full tuck? So, I mean, I like it, but I'm not sure what the background is, but but in terms of a couple, are they talking, you know, would she normally be sitting on the tracks? And it's just, it's just part of the story, and it's absolutely personal preference. Wonderful theme here. You've obviously got an eye. Is this all natural? Did you drop something? Okay. Um, I would definitely add to this series um, this winter um, and, and expand on that, because you've got the eye. You've got a great look to it. You've picked up that powder and the sunlight, shooting directly into the sun like that. Um, you've managed to get the shot, and it looks great. I love the blue tone here. I think this is the first one that we've seen tone to blue. Um, this one is great. It's got all kinds of attitude. It might be fun just to do it like that third one in and just give it a little bit of the, the same effect and almost have it in a, in a, in a series of several images that have had attitude. Um, agree with tomorrow. It's it's sweet. Um, your interior shot, I think, really works well. Um, is the restaurant any, any good? Okay. Where is it? Okay. So I, we can't go there for dinner tonight, right? It's a three hours drive. George, we'll be late tomorrow. Um, it's 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 a really good. It, it's a good, solid body of work. It's, it, you could expand on this kind of look a little bit more. Um, a couple of them that, that I, don't, I don't think work as well, because they're rose petals and they're now so big, um, they don't work quite as well in your portfolio. But 
um, in terms of being able to shoot editorial work, you've got the eye. The, the images are good, they're printed well, the exposures are great. Um, my favorite is, is absolutely this one, and then at the other extreme, the third one in there. They're just, there's so much, and actually this one here as well, there's just, there's so much impact to these. Um, on this one, I don't know what I would do differently because as, as a parent, that's exactly what we used to do, is just sit and watch for hours and watch the baby sleep. And it's almost like it either needs to be tighter, or I don't know if it works for me that you toned it. It might have, it might have been better in color, and yet it's just so beautiful that you can't, I can't argue with it. You've captured the emotion. Um, and maybe it's just more in the series. Maybe I want to see a few more of parents with, with newborns, with babies. But very nice work. Jennifer. So um, I think you have a bunch of good stuff. I think that uh, uh, Skip and uh, Tamar already made these points, but I'm just going to throw them in there because I think it's good. Just in terms of juxtaposing things in a portfolio, right? Like these two guys together to me look really good. That works really well. Shit, the battery is dying. And, can't do anything about that. you know, he can even work in with that. He can even work in with it that way, can be okay. I think that uh, where is it? it can even be kind of, you know, it's so hard to know, but there's so many cool things you can do. I mean, it, obviously, these are really nice together for sure. That looks great. In, in a funny way, you know, you can juxtapose things that are just really jarring and different, because then you kind of see each one more for what's great about it, because they're so different. I think this, things I like about these two pictures in particular, is what again what Jay would talk about, Jay Maisel about gesture, like the fact that he's just not standing there, like the jarring aspect of that and it's burned out and stuff works really well. And everything about what she's doing is great. The tip of her head, what she's doing with her fingers, like she's it's a great, really a great picture of a little girl. I think that's fantastic. Um, so and I think this and this work well together graphically, they look really good. I think they're really nice, and again, the Tony on this is good. This one I worry about, uh, kind of, I think, what Skip was talking about, but to me, if it's a couple, it's a worry. And other, I mean, it looks like they're just negotiating price at that point. I'm not so sure. <laughs> it's just iffy to me. I don't know. I get a bad feeling from it. So it just seems like a funny, a, you know what I mean? It just seems like a funny thing. I don't know if I like it. Um, this one, sorry. This one, I think, is like, that's a priceless picture of this little baby. That's so great. But I feel like there's all kinds of stuff going on, like, these things are really in the way. You know, you could, this could be in, you know, 2020 hindsight, it could be a crappie thing. Tough, tough call, you know? Maybe it's a crappie thing. I don't, like, does it get better brought in more somehow? You know, it's still, uh, the thing that would be great to think about, obviously, it's 2020 hindsight, but just the same. It's sort of like the most important thing in this picture is the baby, right? The second most important things are going to be their faces. So like if you sort of had this beautiful sleeping baby and these two ovals, it'd be really nice. In a, like we've seen in other pictures that um, for some of the other assignments where people are sort of wardrobed accordingly. So if this is sort of darker underneath the baby and if they're wearing dark, simple clothes and if the background is either seamless or plain wall, then you'd really just focus in on that. As it stands now, for sure, digitally, you could actually bring down this, not a lot, but just bring down other stuff to really focus in on that. You could really bring this stuff down, tone it down, or get rid of it. And I just think you'd pace, it's really lovely. I think that they're watching the baby's great. I think it's really nice. I wouldn't mind terribly if even they were holding hands or if their hands were touching, you know, just kind of a shared moment, I think would be nice. But I think that's good. I think that uh, this picture works good for this, but I think it has to be retouched. You know, it's too shiny for her for what it is. So you just need to, like, just give her the benefit of the doubt. I agree. I had a hard time. At first, I didn't know what was going on. So that was just a little bit of a hard read. And um, I think that a thing that was confusing to me, I think, looking at it was, and I get that these pictures, again, are different things for different purposes, but let's say 
you have these two still life, so they have a really nice feeling to them. The tones are nice, they're kind of monochromatic, the light's really nice, they work really well. I feel like this one maybe needs to just be pulled out a touch or not. And this one, I'm not 100% sure what the focus is exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, this isn't focused down here, physically focused. But it's sort of like, if this is what I want to be really looking at, then do I want to aim down a little more or have the light a little more concentrated so they like the glasses sparkle? Do you know what I mean? Just something a little more helping you along. But a worry to me when I'm looking through here is just kind of um, big variation. And again, again, I get that they're different things. But variations in contrast and tone that to me um, don't feel as deliberate. Like these things have, have a contrast and a tone that makes total sense and looks great, I think. Right? And I think these things have a look that's really nice. And they, they totally make sense. Where I have a harder time with it is actually like, there's like kind of a, a funny kind of hardness to like that and this, where it just is, it feel, like nothing is real sharp, but it's real contrasty, so it feels sort of unsatisfying in a way, I think. You know, it's really hard to look at. And I think that comes through here as well. Jake earlier. All right, yeah, you're incognito, but we see you over there. Uh, Sharon, where are you? 
Is this a little like Ireland? Yeah, it's just like that. Leah. Leah, where are you? You're taking notes out there. Uh, I thought a lot about this. And, uh, I probably have it done in my mind since George said that I could do this and have the privilege of doing it. I've probably done this several times. You guys have actually graduated a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I, I got to think, it's like, this is kind of my opportunity to say hello to everybody. And some of the things that, that, that I, I guess we can put out finally for you. Uh, Many questions, and I, I think remind you guys. You guys have seen me when I have been happy. You've seen me when I've been sad. Maybe you didn't know that. You've seen me when I've been very perturbed, and I get a kick out of that when people come up and say, "We know you were," and, it, and you know what? It's probably never been about you. Some of you can remember some of the instances, and it had nothing to do with us. Well, as far as the smile that I see, I try to have, and I, I actually find it quite easy. Uh, I think of. Uh, where I am, and I don't know sometimes if you guys know where you are. We are in school, but it is different. And I like to think of you and the staff behind me as creative types. <coughs> now, I'm not knocking the, the uh, profession of mathematics or English. It, it's not my thing. But I'm just thinking, oh, what a bunch of wacky people. Uh, that we let through the door. And I say creative types, and I think we proved, or you proved it in a portfolio, how different people can do things. Uh, a lot of emotions, a lot of learning, a lot of goals, a lot of failures, a lot of success. Uh, we, and here's another thing. You heard the applause as you came in here. It started before you got here. It started for the staff, and, I, and I'm thinking, who else would clap for a bunch of people they don't really know, other than they've been kicking our kids' asses all year long. <laughs> and, uh, why do you think I'd smile? Uh, it's legal for me to pull some of this stuff off. Well, anyway, I want to get things going. I, I have to admit, I, have a, I do have a lot of power. And I have a lot of gab. I'm not going to do a lot of that today. I do control the rain as far as when it starts. I haven't figured out how to stop it yet. Uh, anyway, at this time, I'm getting things moving. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce, introduce to you the Executive Director of the uh, Education of Hallmark Institute of Photography, Lisa Devlin Robinson. Everybody. Uh, of course, I'd like to add my welcome to the family and friends who are with us today and the class of 2009. So exciting. It's been a long, long road with you guys. I've watched you since day one, and the changes that I've seen from the beginning of this journey until now are tremendous. We started way back when, if you can remember, wandering around old Deerfield, scared and lost. Where do we park? What is this place? 213 of you weighed down with camera equipment, looking a little bit panicked. You guys got to know each other pretty slowly. You had to do auto autobiographical speeches, which helped get to know each other a little bit more. You found out that your class is made up of people with ages ranging from 18 to 55, with different educations from high school diploma or GED to advanced multiple master's degrees. You have a wide variety of cultures and experience. In fact, you represent 42 different states, from Massachusetts all the way to California, as well as 10 different countries. Bermuda, Brazil, Canada, Dominica, Ecuador, Germany, Iceland, Ireland, Mexico, and Singapore. All in the house today. Very exciting. over the course of this last year is a group of individuals who came together as a class over things like the stress of your very first, possibly your first ever critique, phase one critique, over learning lighting and posing each other in the studios over and over and over again. You've logged thousands of hours side by side in a dimly lit computer lab 
Were you always happy to be there? Yes. No. Of course not. Did you always get it? No. But were you there? Yes. You were challenged, and you as a group rose to the occasion. You all submitted self-portraits at different points throughout the year, and it was fascinating to watch how much you grew and where you were at the different checkpoints. We definitely all learned a lot about you through those self-portraits. Very interesting. There are people here that you didn't even know in the fall, and now you don't know how you're going to be able to live without them. You took your lumps together and celebrated your victories together. You individuals became the class of 2009. Congratulations to each and every one of you for being here today. Another group is, who has been along this journey with you are your faculty and staff here at Hallmark Institute of Photography. So at this time, <laughs> I'd like to just introduce the platform and keep us standing up here on stage to honor all of you. Uh, I'd like to get through this quickly, If so if you could please hold your applause until the end. I'm going to introduce them in two different groups, uh, and I'll start with the administrative team. So, if I could ask the administrative team members to please stand. On the top row, to my far right, is our Director of Alumni and Student Information Services, Matt Jacobson Carroll. <laughs> Very nice, nice job. Uh, next to Matt is Enrollment Specialist Carly D'Amato. Next to Carly is Career Training Coordinator Tracy Farner. Next to Tracy is our Student Resource Manager and Housing Liaison, Brenda Cadella. Uh, I'm going to jump over here to my far left. Still on the top row, we have our Administrative Assistant, Danielle Hagen. Next to Danielle is our Director of Financial Aid, Kristen Hemaleski. Next to Kristen is Enrollment Specialist, Brooke DeLiva. And next to Brooke is our Director of Admissions, Lindsay O'Neill. <laughs> next to Lindsay is our Director of Student Services and Housing Coordinator, our local mom, Tammy Murphy. Moving on to the first row, to my far right is our Director of Operations, Tom Burden. Next to Tom is our Vice President of Enrollment Services, Andy Vasellio. To my far left is our Director of Business Operations, Ed Martin. <laughs> uh, moving in a few chairs is our Director of Career Services, Vern McClish. How about a round of applause for our administrative team members? educational team members. If you would all please stand. <laughs> Where to start? Let's see. I'm going to start on the top row to my far left with our director of multimedia technology and instructor Gabriel Hamaleski. <laughs> Next to Gabriel <laughs> is instructor Braden Chapman. Next to Braden is instructor Michael Merritt. Next to Michael is instructor David Frazier. Next to Dave is instructor Pete Chilton. Umbrellas in the view here. 
Like I said, everybody, they should just. No, I need them. I have to keep Michael on his toes. I like to confuse him. It's not hard. <laughs> Stay with me, I'm all the way over here on the right. We've got our Director of Software Development and Instructor, Paul Bissex. Next to Paul is Instructor Rob Archer. Next to Rob is Instructor John Nordell. Next to John is Instructor Paul Teeling. Next to Paul is our Director of Student Progress and Instructor, Christina Shepard. Next to Christina is instructor Michael Zai. All right, so we're going to move to the front row. To my far right, we have our director of digital imaging and instructor Tom Tisto. Next to Tom is our director of commercial photography and instructor Dick D'Alessandro. Next to Dick is our Director of Design and Imaging Arts and Instructor, Joan Terry. <laughs> to my far left is our Director of Academic Services, Shelly Nicholson. <laughs> and our two Directors of Education, Rich Barnes and Tony Downer. <laughs> dedicated to providing professional photographers with the finest tools needed to create images, and chairman of Hallmark's program advisory team, please welcome Jan Letterman. Our keynote speaker following three decades of work for National Geographic, uh, photographer Sam Abel. Joining us today, representing our alumni from Hallmark's class of 2008, Mark Denman. <laughs> and finally, the man whom without this, Hallmark would not be possible, the president and executive director of Hallmark Institute of Photography, George Rosa III. On behalf of the entire faculty and staff, I would like to say congratulations and welcome to all of you, family and guests, and to the class of 2009. So happy that you're all here with us today. All right, I'd like to hand it back over to Tony Downer. Well, I'm not going to do one, but I do want, and I'm hoping these two people can stand up. Uh, Swen and Mateo, are you here? You're like part of the class. And, uh, there's, I see Swen. Same with you? All right. I probably couldn't say something to all of them. And i got to know, is Travis here? Travis! Yeah, of course. It's sort of like, where's Waldo, right? Who's going to tie on today? Huh? Admit it, guys, I see a lot of ties out there. And you all look sharp. I'd like to think I taught you that. But I know I probably did because I'm the only one here like this. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking again while, while we're sitting here, and there are times, it's kind of a bummer, you hear people kind of go back. And I feel like the, the oven is being turned up here, so maybe it won't rain. Uh, maybe it'll just get sweltering hot, which I'm sure a lot of you will like. Uh, good for Tucker and his sandals, I'm sure. 
I have to tell this because I still find it incredibly insane. I did not go to a normal four-year school when I got out of here. And I remember hearing a lot of stories from my friends who would talk about what they would do for concert tickets. And you, you guys know I don't listen to music, so it really makes no sense for anybody to get up at 0.30 in the morning and see the concert tickets. But I, I couldn't help but think one day, it's like, uh, I think it was 20 below. Uh, at, at home. Where I am, it's always colder than anywhere else, and I get more snow than anybody. You know, I'm one of those guys. But it's 20 below, and uh, I thought, all right, this is kind of cool, because it's it's different. Everything cracks, everything crunches. Your fingers and your tongue stick to things that you shouldn't have them. Uh, but I made my way into school, and I wasn't in any particular hurry. Uh, so probably more so for any of you smart ones that weren't here, and of course for friends and family, et cetera, but I walk in the front door as normal, and it's about 10 or 7, and I'm sort of seeing some steam and stuff uh, in the student entrance, which is directly across the building from me, and I, I really wasn't sure what that was. It's, you know, it's cold out, I'm not really thinking about it, it's just the equipment room is going to open, and it's going to be another dog day. Uh, but anyway, I got close to the door to unlocking it at exactly 7 o'clock in the morning, right? Uh, another reason, and you wonder why I smile, you know? But in any case, when I went to the door and I looked out there, in the perfect single file line, there had to be 60 people out there at least, uh, and they were making the steam. And I think somebody said they'd been out there since about 3, 3, 3 a.m., 3.30 in the morning, and I'm thinking, who likes equipment that much? You know? <laughs> John Paul. Uh, before uh, I introduce the next speaker, I want to uh, point out a few people that, I, that were instrumental in, in what we have here today. I want to recognize uh, the lovely ladies who helped us today by handing out your graduation programs. Uh, Keanu Barnes, where are you? Where are you? Well, I'm sure she, oh, there she is, way back there with her mom. And also, Sydney Barnes, are you there as well? She's, do a cartwheel for us or something. All right. Uh, Sarah Toomey, who's here today, one of the first people ever. Where are you, Sarah? Pop up and down like a bunny. All right, got it. And Marissa Rosa. Where are you, Marissa? Is she hiding? I she's hiding from me. There she is. Somebody grabbed her. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, also today, um, I, I, I said we're on, but I'm on it. We have us with us today our official photographers of your graduation. So a couple of people that I uh, got to know last year, and, and they had the right attitudes all year long, and doing their thing, and I think they kept it. They're great examples of very good people, and I think very good photographers. Uh, Katie Sullentrop and Marcello Fracasa. Marcello's over here, and Katie's over here. Also, uh, I want to introduce uh, Scott Harris. There he is, he's on the camera, I think, over there, and he's responsible for our audio today. Uh, at this time, I would like to bring to the podium, we'll get things going again here, Hallmark's Director of Career Ser Services, Vern McClish. Well, good morning, guys and girls and women. Uh, to me, you have been a great, great class. And I just want to recognize all those That's folks out in the audience behind you that I know supported you along the way. Um, thank you for coming and, and thank you for being so supportive for these, this, this great, great group of people. Let me start with a quote from our speaker that should resonate with everyone in the audience. Every day that I am a photographer, I try to be a better photographer. Just like Sam, as creative people, our education never ends. It just evolves and is enriched each day we practice our chosen craft. 
Sam came from a family of teachers, and to this day he generously shares his knowledge, mentoring many young photographers so that they can enjoy the rewards of our glorious profession. I know that everyone in the class of 2009 is here because of their passion for photography. Photography illustrates like no other form of communication, both the best and the worst in the world. It transcends all languages, cultures, and beliefs, and is only interpreted in different ways by the people who are viewing it. Just like each of you began his journey as a photographer with, a, with an unbounded passion for our art and craft, a good education, hard work, good technique, good network, great vision, and talent, the talent enabled Sam to live the dream of many photographers, a dream that I venture most of you in this audience have had, and that is of being a National Geographic photographer. Sam began his journey at National Geographic working as an intern for the publication. This internship turned into a 30-year photographic career with this world-renowned publication. It has been his passport to many exotic locations and his introductions to many wonderful, warm, and interesting people. And most importantly, his pulpit for sharing his visions and experiences with the people and places of our world. If each of you work very hard, never give up, and grab the opportunities that will come your way, like Sam, you too will have a magical life in our chosen profession of photography. It is a privilege and a great honor to introduce our special guest speaker, photography, photographer Sam Abel. Congratulations, graduates, <coughs> parents of graduates, and grandparents of graduates. As you were walking in, Vern leaned over to me and said, this has been a really great class. So when he said to you that you were a great class, he also said to me confidentially. He wasn't saying it, just to have something to say. I don't know what your view of this morning has been like, but from the podium, it's gone from beautiful to more beautiful <laughs> to a little overexposed to just right. <laughs> As Lisa was talking, the umbrella started to come out, and I thought, where's the photograph? And it's from the top of the building, right above Burns' office. Soft rain falling, umbrellas popping out, great light, great atmosphere, soft, lasting. All of these things matter to photographers, and you don't turn it on or turn it off. You take it in. And that was the view from the podium, and your view was different. You're all photographers. Light matters, moments matters, the structure of the scene matters. It was beautiful. It's a beautiful day. And I will just say, of all the graduations that I've been to, this is the happiest. And I hope I can add a little bit of happiness to the day by what I say to you all. The first thing I want to say is thank you to the Hallmark Institute for teaching you the philosophy of photography, especially for teaching you the business of photography. I was recently asked in an interview what the most important thing a young photographer can have in the way of training. And I said, without hesitation, learning to run a small business. It's something I never learned. I still miss it. So thank you to the Hallmark Institute for teaching you not only photography, but the business of photography. I want to say thank you all, all of you, for coming to a live event. I think that at a live event, anything can happen. You can even have your life changed. I believe that, and I'm here today because it happened to me. When I was 15, my father took me across Ohio to Kent State University to hear a National Geographic photographer speak. I cannot remember what he said. I don't remember any of the photographs that he showed. But I remembered his name. His name was Albert Moldvay. And that day, I got the idea that my humble life in Ohio shouldn't exclude me from becoming a National Geographic photographer. 
I learned photography from my dad. We had a dark room in our basement, one of those dark rooms that was only dark at night. <laughs> and at 15, I took what many people think the best photograph of my life in Vern's hometown of Pansville, Ohio. It's a photograph in black and white of my father watching a train depart in the middle of the winter. Seven years after I heard Albert Moldvay speak, I was a summer intern at National Geographic. At the end of that summer, I was on my first assignment in the Siberian Arctic. That assignment was to accompany two U.S. Coast Guard cutters around the world. We got halfway. Over the Siberian Arctic, the ice stopped us. When we tried a second route, the Russian military and Russian government stopped us, and the State Department ordered us back to Rotterdam. Icebreakers are fine in the ice, but not so good in the open water. They have no keel. We encountered a six-day gale. I almost lost my hand and my life. I had profound seasickness and my neck was paralyzed. When we got back to Rotterdam, I phoned National Geographic and I said nothing about what had happened to me. I had learned that lesson in high school from my high school yearbook advisor. He said, tomorrow you're gonna to see the yearbook. You will only see the mistakes. Two things, learn from the mistakes and don't talk about them to others. So grads in your life, don't talk about your mistakes. Learn from them. Take them in and be silent. I mentioned that icebreaker trip and what happened to me on the way back to introduce you to the idea that there will be tests in this life, this photographic life. It's not important that you get A's. It's only important that you not fail. Speaking of tests, I wasn't taking them at the University of Kentucky, my alma mater. I was living the photographic life, editor of the yearbook, photographer for the yearbook, intern at National Geographic, intern at a great newspaper in Louisville, and not going to class. And so 40 years ago, this year, in one month, my father went down to the basement of our house in Sylvania, Ohio, and wrote me a letter. I have a copy of it here. The original is framed in a museum in Virginia. But this is a copy from the book, The Photographic Life. July 13th, 1969. Dear Sam, decide that you were going to pass linguistics. Parenthesis here. I needed a D in linguistics to get a 2.0 in my major and a 2.0 overall. The mathematical minimum to graduate. I needed that D. Decide that you're going to pass linguistics, study hard, and pull out all the stops. And what follows is his eight point plan on how to graduate from college. Look alert, parenthesis, don't sleep in class. And point number two I, is the only one of these that I've used all my life. Lean forward from the hip line toward prof, like this gentleman's doing right here. You're gonna get an A for this speech. So. <laughs> point three, show more than average interest at all times. Scout the teacher, find out what it is he wants and let him have it. Scout the opposition, parenthesis, other students. Be more dynamic than they. Consider the course a challenge. Cope with the challenge. Point seven, most profs will not fail a student who in their opinion really tried to pass the course. And his last point, point eight, come hell or high water, pass. <laughs> and then he signs it with my nickname for him, Daddy Boy. Just to let me know that the letter was affectionate. And the letter's over, except he has three more thoughts. Points nine, 10, and 11. <laughs> Take notes or pretend to be taking notes. Point 10, he's really getting desperate here on point 10. Ask to sit closer. And then, wonderfully, and finally, point number 11, give Prof a bottle of liquor as a going away gift. <laughs> I thought of photography not as a business or a career, but as a way of life, the photographic life. I feel today that we're in this life together, you grads, 
together with me. I have to say that the only thing that distinguishes my life is that I worked harder than the other photographers at my college, a college that had no photo program. I learned about hard work in high school. I was named editor of the paper and editor of the yearbook and photographer for both. And it felt like four full-time jobs. That hard work added up to the happiest year of my life. And somewhere along the line, I guess that year, I got the idea that hard work could lead to happiness. On my last assignment for National Geographic, I took up an assignment that no one had ever done before, no one from the West, that is, life inside the Imperial Palace of Japan. It was crucial that I meet the Emperor of Japan. Without the story, I mean, without him, there would be no story. For one year, we could not meet the Emperor of Japan, and our interpreter was driven to the brink of despair by this. And one day she started crying, and she didn't stop. And I thought, honestly, she was suicidal, and I called her boss. And I said, I just want you to let you know that Akiko's working really hard. I think you ought to give her a phone call tonight. She's in real despair, because we can't meet the emperor. And I couldn't make her stop crying. What I want to tell you is that she's really, really worked hard. There was silence on the other end of the phone, and his voice Finally, I heard him clear his voice, and he said to me, she must work harder. On the last day of that year, I met the emperor. He knew my name. Mr. Sam Abel, how do you do? Is everything all right? Nothing had been right for a year. We'd worked our butts off. But I was standing with the emperor of Japan. He knew my name. I'd always wanted a golden moment to end my career on, and this was it. And so I did what my parents in Ohio had taught me to do. I told a lie in the name of the truth. I said, yes, your majesty, everything's fine. My dad's 11-point plan inspires me to give you a few thoughts about how to live your life now that you've graduated. Number one is be true to this school, the Hallmark Institute. My college, the University of Kentucky, had had no photo program and has no photo program. So I have given to that college a traveling scholarship for the student in that school who most deserves and most has earned the right to travel somewhere. That's all. Travel. The thing I've done all my life. The other thing I would like you to do is find a way to connect with your parents, a real way. And by real, I mean do something concrete. I take black and white photographs to remind me of my father and my grandfather. I wash clothes, laundry that is, and pin them up with wooden pegs. Georgia O'Keeffe's first memory of her mother was her mother hanging out sheets on a line. It's also my first memory of my mother. And I hang clothes on a line with wooden pegs to remind me of my mother. I would like you to find a way to collaborate. Each of you is an individual, but you're not so strong as an individual, I'm sorry to say, and neither am I. Without collaboration, without working with writers and editors, carefully chosen, without working with great colleagues, writers, editors, art directors, stylists, you're not going to get very far. Master the art of collaboration and be grateful. Be grateful and give credit to your collaborators. <coughs> I, failed to, I failed to give credit to my collaborator on the great University of Kentucky two-volume yearbook that I was editor of. It said Sam Abel, editor and photographer on the title page, and nothing else. Yes, that yearbook was my idea, the two volumes, the slipcase. But I was crushed by my ingratitude as soon as I saw that page. And I said so at a lecture 35 years later. There was a freshman sitting in the audience, a woman from Northern Ohio. And she said, well, maybe he can't do anything about thanking Dick Ware, who has since died, his collaborator. But I will. I'll become editor of that yearbook. And I'll be grateful for Sam. And so in 1969, she did a tribute yearbook. And on the front page, it says, in memory of Dick Ware, 
Photography is about time. Books are about time. I've always been struck by the relationship between the word gratitude and graduation. And so today I would like to rename this day. I would like to call it Gratitude Day. I would like you to find a way to say thank you to your parents and to their parents, to your teachers and to your real people and to your real teachers, those peers of yours sitting right around you today. They are the true, your true teachers. They have taught you how to be here at Hallmark. You have competed subtly and directly, and you will for the rest of your lives. There's a, there's a way to say thank you. I've learned it, so I'm going to pass it on to you. Be specific. Thank one of your peers for something specific they did. Thank your parents for something specific they did. If someone says to me, Sam, I really like your book, it really matters if they call out to me a specific photograph. I've thanked Hallmark today for something specific that I didn't have, learning the business of photography. It's a good way to start thanking Hallmark. This photographic life is what I wanted to live. It was the right life for me. A life of beauty, a life of meaning, a life of giving back, a life of living up to photography, to the masters, to the great work, to the high aspirations that photography calls you to. We're in this life together, you and I. I didn't know you before today, but I will never forget you. And so as you take hold of this photographic life and get out on the road to living it, to taking its tests and not failing them, to passing those tests, I hope that you'll think of me, as I will think of you. And when you think of me, think of me also taking tests. They don't stop, and neither does learning. A great day, the end of something, the beginning of something, the photographic life, we're in it together. I'll be thinking of you. Thank you all. As photographers, and and Sam was talking about a lot of other things. Uh, when I had come to school here, it was all about the photography. I could have cared less about anything. It was like, what am I going to shoot? What am I going to shoot? And things like that. And I got to tell you, when I left the school, I knew I was not an A photographer. I was not one of those. I was not a B photographer. Uh, I was a C photographer. And you guys can make your own scale. Put yourself on it. And I will not tell you that I've always wanted to be an A. I knew I had to get to the B side first, but... As far as the business part goes of this, uh, I feel like I did quite well when I left the school. It seemed like I was always busy, and things were working out very, very well. And I, it didn't occur to me uh, that I left the school a little angry that I didn't do more with the photography. And again, I can't help but think some of you might be saying I'm not as good as the other guy. Uh, well, since those days for me, I think i found myself. And it's when I try to shoot out of, outside of what I'm comfortable with or want to do, things do suffer. That's just a message there. The big thing is, I made up for my not the greatest photography in the world. And let's face it, you're going to have that number one guy and then people that follow him. But I feel like I made up with it in other ways. And uh, so as we go through the year, Obviously, we're watching you and you get graded on uh, photography. Uh, I think it's incredible uh, the work that the admissions team is doing because of who we end up with. And I can't say that all, all in the past. I haven't been here. But it's just been really easy working with you because I can have confidence in that maybe you're not the best photographer, but you're trying to be, and you're asking, and you're pissed off sometimes, you know? Now, if you don't get angry and you don't worry about it, you're probably going to stay where you are. So anyway, I just hope that if that helps anybody that thinks that maybe they aren't the best. And also, while I was here at the school, and the one and only reason I was not going to come to the school was when I found out about a stupid, rotten, dreaded thing that we might have to do. 
which was our three different speeches. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that uh, because we are a photography school. We try to incorporate the business aspect of this simply because the other schools don't and most people fumble in that part of it. You guys know people that haven't gone to school that are probably taking pretty good pictures every now and then. That's the one they always show you. I want you guys to value what you do and value who you are, just like everybody else does. You know when you came in here, there's a difference between what you thought was a good picture and one that you created at the end. So we had to do the three different, I didn't want to do that, oh my god. The fact is I hated what I was doing enough, so I decided let's get this a try. And back then what we did is each student was critiqued by the students. And uh, it was very embarrassing and people didn't hold back. It's another reason I just tell you what's on my mind. Uh, what this does is it builds your self-esteem and your confidence. So maybe you don't feel like you have it, but trust me when I say this, you have more than when you walk in. You've all grown that way and you've grown as people. I also have to tell you it's not going to end for you. Uh, Heck, I had not planned on ever teaching. My father taught high school for 36 years. It was just never even crossed my mind with that. And when George asked me to come on board and do something, my first thought, I, I got nothing for these guys. Um, I asked him what I was going to be doing. And one of the things I was going to be teaching was the communications program, the business communications. And I thought, I don't know. In fact, I think I said, I don't want to do that. And he said, you will if you want the job quite direct. Uh, so I appreciate you know, George bringing me on, and I, I hope I make this easy. I didn't introduce earlier, but most of you guys know Pico. Uh, so we all have our crutches. Right now, uh, I'm going to put somebody on the line up here. And what we try to do every year, we bring a representative of the student body up here uh, to speak for the class. And uh, I know that when we, and you guys know who it is, when we asked this person, told this person that she was going to be doing this, uh, probably a reaction similar to others have had when we do it. It's like, oh my goodness. It is not that hard. These are very friendly people. And especially, I mean, look at all these gorgeous people in front of me. So right now, I want to bring up your student representative, Juanita Hahn. with all of you here and hopefully we'll continue that after it's over 
And um, I'm just so thankful that I met all of you guys and, and all of you here as well. And um, it just shows how much the school is means the world to me. Um, and throughout the 10 months, there's, there's been some, so there's been a lot of things that happened and that I want to share with you guys. So I created like the top 10 list favorite moments from Hallmark that I want to share with you all. Hopefully I don't embarrass anyone. You can kick my butt afterwards. It's okay. My parents are here. They'll protect me. Um, so I'm just going to go down the list. Well, first and foremost, um, Spotting Tony a thousand feet above ground in the airplane with his bright orange suit during aerial photo class. And also his clipboard. Did you guys know his clipboard is from 1983? Yeah, pretty legit. Legit. Okay. Um, I'm counting your nose in our heads, then with our fingers, then tallying it up in our little notebooks, then using an iPhone app counter. Max walking around, where's Max? Max Lewis Miller, what's up? Okay, um, Max walking around the school eating a full loaf of bread while holding two bottles of Gatorade because he was so hungover. <laughs> Michael Zine. Oh, enough said. <laughs> okay, stepping out the back door of the school building and breathing the nice, fresh fish air. <laughs> Tyler Sharp, is his family here? Hi! Oh man, Tyler Sharp, where are you, my love? Hi! Okay. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Giggity, I don't know. Um, Barnes' question of the day while doing attendance, especially the question, what's your favorite dessert? And Megan Shepard simply re responding, Michael's eye. <laughs> seeing Christina Shepard, <laughs> seeing Christina Shepard at the open house after she had her lovely son, aww. I had to add it in there. Come on, I can't be funny all the time. <laughs> Um, John Nordell rapping about dragging the shutter. <laughs> Gabe getting up on stage for announcements that terrified us every time. Gabe is right there. Hi, Gabe. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> waiting outside in the freezing cold at 5 in the morning for equipment. That's dedication. Rebar running around. Where's Rebar? Yeah. Rebar running around running through the DL, shirtless at midnight with fake blood all over his body and screaming, then running into the door. <laughs> Getting a Facebook message about Barnes's dog being kidnapped and being held hostage. I, I don't know if we ever completed that one. Daryl Dobson, where you at? <laughs> Threatening us to close the, co the computer lab before final portfolio was due unless we did a wave. <laughs> Paparazzi Conrad, there he is, he's already working it. Connie, Conrad. Um, and Megan Mill is yelling to take his shirt off outside the class, in class, in the parking lot, in the bathroom, everywhere. Gabe crumbling, then stomping on a photo of Mariah Carey, that was awesome, that was during class. And him calling me a Cylon throughout this entire year, and I never saw an episode of Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Sorry, Gabe. <laughs> uh, last but not least, KB, Kristen Black, asking if she can write her license plate number on the post Hallmark address form. Because <laughs> we could all relate to that one. Um, and. Wait, okay. So, on a serious note though, uh, this year has been an un unforgettable year. I mean, this is, I'm just, I'm really gonna miss you guys and the tears were just, I couldn't, I didn't want to cry, I didn't want to be a wuss, but I couldn't help it because seeing all of your faces all at once just got me really emotional, it just really hit me. It hasn't hit me until now. <laughs> and um, I just want to thank all the parents, um, especially Tyler's parents for letting him go to the school. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, uh, to the instructors, who actually are not instructors, but are mentors. Seriously, you guys, are, all of you guys are our mentors. 
And last but not least, my classmates. Um, you guys aren't really my classmates. You guys, all of you guys are my friends. That's what I consider you guys. And family, friends, there you go. Um, and Michael Zai, we decided that um, we were gonna co uh, collect 25 cents for your Diet Coke for next year, so you don't have to smoo smooch, smooch off of uh, the students next year. So uh, when we get our awards and stuff, everyone's gonna donate 25 cents so you can get your Diet Cokes for the year next year. <laughs> and that can be my speech, you know? <laughs> some romance that I knew nothing about, I still usually get a hug from our student speaker, so if you all need You know, I mean, you know, it's like, I mean, you know, you know. You know what I mean? I noticed it too for 60 minutes. Are you comfortable? One of my, uh, in my mind, rehearsals of this is I was going to burn you guys all day long with that and I said no I'm probably going to so, so. Richard Murray, have you broke the chair yet? Uh, we're going to keep cruising with things right here. Uh, and to me this is really where it all begins here. So to present today's graduates uh, with your certificate of completion it's my honor to welcome the president Thank you, everyone, and good morning. Before we begin with, begin with the presentation of certificates, I'd like to recognize a few special people who have joined us here today from our corporate office. Advertising Director Chris Marion, sitting back there in the chairs back there. Welcome, Chris. Our Director of Marketing, Tony McPeck. <laughs> Senior Vice President of Finance and CFO, Bill Angels. <laughs> and the person responsible for allowing me to carry out my vision for making Hallmark the best damn photography school in the world. accompanied by his lovely wife, Mary, and lovely daughter, Melissa, Mr. Gary Camp. <laughs> Welcome to all of you folks. Thank you for joining us. Believe me when I say this, without you today, it would not have been happening. There are a number of advantages for support for us from our corporate office, but none is more clear than when a, a number of us attended an in-service event that the corporate put on a couple of months ago. It was entitled Delivering the Dream. The day was filled with lots of information and inspiration for us to bring back to the classrooms, but it was the way the day ended that really touched me. Each of us attending was presented with a character coin entitled Making a Difference. The coin was accompanied by the starfish story. Do you know of it? For those of you that don't, let me try and, and, and bring you into the story. It's about an old man walking down the shore, littered with starfish, beached and dying from the storm. He runs into this little nine-year-old girl who is picking them up and flinging them back into the ocean. The old man says, why bother? You're not saving enough to make a difference. The little girl bends over, picks up another one, flings it back into the water. Looks up at the man and says, made a difference to that one. Since receiving this coin and hearing that story, I can't help but thinking of all of you as 195 starfish. Some of you never came out of the water in 10 months. Some of you washed to shore and we helped you get back in. In either case, I can only hope that you'll agree with me 
that together we've made quite a difference in each other's lives. Today you, the class of 2009, as you end your 10-month journey here at Hallmark, and you walk across this stage to accept this certificate of completion, let's agree that we won't stop making a difference. We'll do our part to make a difference in the lives of those that will follow in your seats. And you do your part by using your incredible skills and talent. Touch someone, something, every day with your photography and make a difference. Thank you. To assist me with this presentation of certificates, please welcome back to the podium our Executive Director of Education, Lisa Devlin Robinson. Archibald Reed. <laughs> 